Welcome to Mental Toad University, the fourth class. Uh, today we have a guest speaker, Robbie, a fellow toad, is going to talk about JavaScript. Hi. And we also have a special treat from another toad here. Uh, Peter Bliss was kind enough to load Linux onto a bunch of USB sticks. Um, I had one person that requested one, but I got her hooked up already. So if you have a Windows laptop and you want Linux, speak up now. That's YouTube. <laughs> um, you needed one too, right? No, I have not. Oh, good, good. And we, do you have one? I do not have. I have a laptop, yes. Okay. Laptop, Should we midway talk really to the class? That way they can follow along. <laughs> yeah, we don't need to play with these now. I just want to get them out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, thank you very much, Peter, for thank doing that. Oh, that's right. Very kind of you. And did you get one? No. And you're going to need one too over there? He's got one? All right, good. Now we all have Linux. Um, anybody listening to a recording? Uh, if you have a USB key sitting around with uh, at least two gigs, I think is what you need, um, there are pretty straightforward instructions on how to load that onto a USB key and get it onto your Windows laptop. So you don't have to use Windows to do development. Uh, later on, we're going to have uh, Tom, yet another toad, talk to us about a possible little assignment after the class to give you guys something to do before next week. Um, and now I'll turn it over to Robbie. Cool. Hello, everybody. Everyone in the room. Um, all right. So we're going to learn about JavaScript today. And uh, part of that is we need to learn about the basics of programming first. Uh, you can't we will use JavaScript, but you need to kind of know uh, what's a variable, what's a value, what's a method and a function, what's a for loop, if statement, all these kinds of things. So we're going to start at the very, very bottom, um, or top, however you want to define it. Um, has anyone here actually programmed JavaScript before? OK, cool. So this will be good. I'm not going to cover material that you've already heard for the most part. Um, great, so as a little demo, uh, JavaScript is awesome. It's on the screen right now. Um, I kind of want to show you, you, you can do pretty much anything with JavaScript. Um, you can animate things, you can switch out text, you can work pages, you can run a chat server, you can make video games. Um, and so on this page, uh, you can see why is JavaScript cool? Well, it runs in the browser and the server. We're not going to worry about that server part. Uh, but that's really cool, and uh, as you get into JavaScript, you might want to look into it. Uh, yeah. We have lights off. Oh, yeah. Way better. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, it's one of the only languages that actually runs in the browser, and that's why it's so prominent. Pretty much everything interactive you see on the internet is uh, done with JavaScript. Um, and has a very elegant, easily to, easy to read uh, syntax. Um, already covered. You can do animations and interactions, and it's fun. It's a fun language. It's my favorite language at the moment. So you do things like this, like click that. Whoa! Um, I can trigger an animation. I can change text color, and I can just push this guy along the screen with every click. Or you can uh, load some text. So that brings me to my next point is, I'm sure you've heard the word Java before. Uh, Java and JavaScript are two completely different languages. Um, it's unfortunate that they share the same name, but they do. <laughs> so if, if people are talking about Java and JavaScript, one is, is, is drastically different. Uh, we're talking about JavaScript today. So uh, let's just get into it then. All right. So let's cover data types first. So the first data type, and you can follow along with this if you want. Actually, no, I, I skipped a step. Um, your most useful tool with JavaScript is this console. Uh, if you are using uh, Chrome, this is the Chrome developer tools, and you go to console. If it's Safari, I think you have to enable the developer tools, and I think Dan already covered that. Um, just look for the tab that says console. If you're using Firebug uh, in Firefox, it also has a console. Um, when you're learning JavaScript, this is the most important place to be because it allows you to test your code live. So for example, I can type my name. Press enter, and it returns my name. Uh, so what I just did is I typed a string. A uh, string is basically 
a, a list of characters. It's, uh, it's a sentence, it's a word, it can be a number, um, and the way you designate a string is with quotations. So you can, uh, this is a string. I can also use single quotes, this too. Um, now with strings, you can do cool things like this. And we'll get into what this actually is later. I can type dot length after it. That's eight characters long. Um, so there, there's a lot of stuff you can do with strings, and we'll come back to that. I want to kind of get through the different data types first. Um, so the next data type is a number. That's the number four. Uh, you'll notice it doesn't have any quotation marks around it. Um, this is a separate data type. Now, an interesting thing about JavaScript is um, it is what we call a weakly typed language. Um, so what weakly typed means is, let's say in another language we were trying to describe some data and it's a string. You might do it like this. In JavaScript, you don't have to do that. It just kind of, whatever you type at it, it just figures it out. Like, it's like, well, that's some letters and spaces. It's a quote. Like, that's probably a string. Um, let me show you something else you can do. Three plus four. Hey, it's seven. Um, and it supports all the operators that you would think of. So plus, minus, times, divide. Uh, modulus, which is uh, returning a remainder off of division. So uh, there are a lot more operators than this, but this is all we're going to cover for now because this is basically what you're going to use in your day-to-day -day life uh, until you dig deeper into JavaScript. Uh, so what else can you do? Uh, Ravi plus likes this. So that's how you, uh, you call that concatenation. So you're basically taking two strings and combining them. Um, everyone got that so far? Any questions? Great. Uh, now, it gets kind of weird. So I can do 5 plus 5, or I can do 5 plus 5. Why does that say 55? Well, JavaScript, uh, it's called coercion. Uh, it's part of the fact that it's weakly typed. So it's basically saying, that string, or that first part, is actually a string. So that second part's probably a string, too. Same thing. Um, so you have to be careful about coercion, yeah, because, you know, you wanted 10, but you got 55. And that is going to make a huge difference in your application. Um, so just something to look out for. Uh, you can't, uh, for example, let's do uh, 5 minus 2. 5 minus 2. Hey, that one actually went fine. Um, the reason that went fine is you can't subtract strings. I can't subtract uh, this. Not a number. That's what that stands for. Uh, so when you're subtracting something, it doesn't, it, and they both look like numbers, it's always going to treat them like numbers. But when you're adding, since that's how you combine strings, um, it can act kind of weird. So keep that in mind. Um, and again, this is why the console is cool. Like, just get in there and dig in and start typing in things and see what happens, because you might get interesting results. Uh, oh, oops, I, helps if I do that right. <clears throat> Now, you'd think those are equal to each other, but they're not. Um, one thing that should be said right up front is JavaScript is kind of a quirky language. Um, there are a lot of gotchas like this that you need to watch out for. And as you play with it, you'll learn them. And there's like websites that cover this. Um, we'll try to not run into them too much in this uh, class. So uh, what else can we do? Let's uh, describe an array. Uh, first, I need to tell you what an array is. Um, an array is a list of objects. Um, so let's say in your pockets right now you have phone keys wallet. So you might do phone keys oops, and if I type it correctly, wallet. That's an array. Uh, it's just a collection of 
other data types. So we're talking about data types. So strings, numbers, now arrays. I can actually add an array in here. And that's a part of that. Uh, you can see Chrome gives you this nice little um, viewer for long arrays and things like that. Um, any questions about arrays? The okay. elements have single and double quotes. Oh, so Chrome Developer Tools for some reason just always outputs a double quote. Mm -hmm. uh, it it's really it really doesn't matter. Some languages that matters, not JavaScript. Um, so another cool thing you can do here is remember when I showed you length on a string? Well, I can do length of an array too. And that's telling me one, two, three, four items. Now this one is a single item of this first array, but it contains three items of its own. Um, arrays have an interesting syntax, so, well, okay, let's, let's save that for a second. Um, the next data type is an object. Uh, it says undefined, but ignore that. Um, so what an object is, it's very much like an array except that it allows you to define each one of those items. So let's say um, phone, you know, uh, Android, uh, keys, uh, metal, I don't know, uh, and wallet, empty, wah, wah. Um, so <laughs> this, is, this is very much like an array. Um, the key is always a single item. This can be numbers, it can be letters. It's just a way to describe the second part. And this can be anything. This could have been a number. This could have been an array. This could even be another object. And that can go on and on forever. Uh, it can be whatever you want. Uh, so let me put that back. Uh, what did I do wrong? Phone, Android, keys, metal, wallet, empty, unexpected token, why? That's the other cool thing about Chrome DevTools is uh, it tells you when you're typing and not doing things right. I don't see anything wrong up there. What is going on? Oh, let's just do this. Um, yeah. Uh, good demo. There we go. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't like the quotes I'm putting on these. So let's get rid of that. So I want to show you what an object looks like in the console. There are times in your code, uh, not in the dev tools, but when you're writing scripts that you will want to put quotes around those things. Uh, but we're in the dev tools now. What is going on? Dan, help me out here. What do you see wrong with my syntax? How can you have a string without quotes? Well, it's just the, uh, oh, I get it. Uh, so I use the word keys. Uh, keys is a protected word. Let's try something else. Door. Uh, no, no. What? All right, Dan, help me out. <laughs> Phone needs to be in quotes. Shouldn't have to. They shouldn't. Any, none of it should be in quotes. Ugh. Okay. If you're having a, Go ahead. If you have um, just the single element, is that is that the same as just having like a block? Uh, no, it's still going to be contained in an object. So like that's still an object. Why is it outputting just phone? You think, Dan? It's funny. I've been writing JavaScript all day and is haven't had. Um, no, it should just be a colon. Huh. Is this... I don't know, I'll start playing too. <laughs> yeah, go ahead and try it. Uh, so that's not a good demo of uh, <laughs> objects. <laughs> um, anyway, so let's, let's go back and talk about something else, and we'll come back to objects in a second. Um, man, that's really frustrating. So, all right, let's talk about variables. 
So with variables, uh, a variable is essentially just a container for any of those things that we just talked about. So let's, for instance, you type var to define your variable. And let's say var thing equals, this is a string. Now, anytime I type thing, it outputs what I just defined. So I defined a variable, I gave it a name. The equal sign means take whatever's here and put it in this thing. So, and again, this can be whatever you want. So let's say var other thing equals thing plus other thing. That's the combination of the two. Um, variables are really complicated when you get into large applications because you can also say this, um, not a global, or, or, wait, global variable equals whatever. And so now I've defined a global variable. Um, I don't want to go too far into what that means now. Uh, for your sake and all the scripts that you're writing right now, make sure you're using var. Um, the short of it is that that keeps it within whatever scope you are currently in. Um, scope is a really large tar uh, topic, and we'll try to cover that later. But uh, for now, just know all your variables need to be defined with var. And the same type of coercion happens if something's a variable or not. So, you know, if I try to add, um, let's define var thing as my name. Now let's add this. It combined them just like it normally would. So variables don't act any different than the actual literal thing you assigned it as, but um, that's a good thing. We don't want things acting, we don't want it acting different. So, okay, uh, let's, oops. All right, we covered variables, we covered strings. Any questions about any of those? I know the objects thing kind of fell apart. We need to revisit that because objects are really important because everything in JavaScript is an object. Um, so this, this is another complicated part. You have strings, you have numbers, you have arrays, you have objects. The weird thing is, strings are also objects. Arrays are objects, numbers are objects. Um, that is a, a very complicated topic that we will try to cover, uh, hopefully, towards the end. Um, okay, so let's move on to loops. Okay, loops are fun. So let's say you need to do a task multiple times. You don't want to type it out uh, 10, 20, 100, 1,000, a million times. So you do a loop. Um, the main type of loop we use is a for loop. So the way to describe this is, um, well, here, let me type out the basic uh, syntax for that. So you would say for, and I'll describe what goes in here in a minute. Um, do what is ever, whatever is inside these brackets. Uh, in JavaScript, brackets are called, uh, you would call that a block. And so your for loop or whatever other operation you're doing, if the next thing is in a, a couple curly bra braces, which is a block, that's what executes for that operation. So for example, uh, whenever you do a for loop, you would say, you do the setup. So you give it some sort of counter, um, in this case, we're saying variable i e equals zero. Um, in JavaScript, everything ends with a semicolon, so you'd put a semicolon. If i, or wait, i is less than 10, I'll explain what that does in a second. Okay, so it just counted from zero to nine, which is the, here with our counter, i is less than 10, so it got to nine and it stopped. Um, so again, this is the setup. This is where you give it the parameters that you're executing this loop on. 
Uh, this next statement would be like the conditional. It's um, with the data that you've set up here or elsewhere in your script, uh, this whole block will run for as long as this is true. And then this is a little counter. So if you put plus plus after something, it counts it up. And if you put minus minus after something, it counts it down. So it's uh, increment and decrement. Um, now let me explain console log, because that's a fun one. Um, console log is, so we're in the console. This is actually really easy to describe. Uh, we're in the console. We want to log something to it. So you type console.log, and whatever you want to output, you just put it in those parentheses. So in this case, we're typing i. We could type um, variable is. And it's going to output whatever I put in there. Um, there's a lot more you can do with these. This is this is the basic <laughs> example. Uh, let me show you another version of a for loop. It's called a for in loop. So first, I need um, I need an array. So let's say variable pockets equal, and we give it the array syntax, which is the brackets uh, phone keys wallet. Oops. So pockets is a variable that contains my array. What I can type is for, and again, I give it a counter, but now I type in pockets. So that's going to increment for every value that exists in that array, array then it stops. So let's say console.log i. Oops. <coughs> So why did we get numbers? Well, this i is the index of whatever's in here. So in JavaScript, like most programming languages, we start at 0 and we count up. So this is 0, this is 1, this is 2. So we got this. Now, if we want the values, you have to type the name of your array and give it its index. That's going to output from Key's wallet. Um, so let's cover why that worked. So again, we have pockets. It's an array. If I want the first thing in that array, I, say I use the same array syntax that I used to define it, but now I'm giving it an index. It's going to access the pointer to that item. Um, let's say, yeah, you can just give it any of these, but let's give it an incorrect value. It says undefined because there is no uh, fifth element defined. Um, so that's why up here we're getting this variable from this for loop, passing it into the array, and it's coming out. Um, any questions around that yet? Cool. Good. Uh, let's try... And so that also works on objects. You can do a for and loop around that. Um, now let's try a different example. Let's go back to our for loop. Um, Let's go back to that one. So the other uh, piece of logic that you're going to use a lot is an if statement. An if statement kind of looks like the for statement. So you're going to say if i equals, uh, let's say, 5, we'll do this thing. So it only output the number 5. Um, because that's what we defined here. We're saying if this matches this, um, go ahead and output this. So another thing that I should define here is, so I'm saying if i equals equals. So before we were just doing an equal sign. Uh, what that means is assign this guy to this guy. Assign this number to this variable. Equals equals will say, it's, it's a comparison operator. So essentially it's saying, does this guy equal this? Now, the weird thing is, that still works. Um, that's that coercion thing I was talking about. So basically, it doesn't care that this is a string or a number, even though the i is just a string, or uh, just a number. So we're comparing a string of five 
to a number five, but it's like, that's cool, no worries, dude. But if I do equals, 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 I get nothing. And that's because it's saying this five needs to match this one, not only in value, but in type. So does that make sense? Awesome. Um, okay, so let's do, let me describe truthy and falsy. Um, so let me show you what truthy looks like. Looks like the number one, and it looks like true. Uh, it could look like a string. It, it's basically anything that isn't zero or false. Um, or null. Or null. Uh, or undefined. So those are all falsy. Um, what's a good way to describe truthy and falsy? Um, Truthy, hmm, I hadn't thought about defining this to you guys. Um, take it for granted that you know these things and you have to describe them to people and suddenly you're stuck because this is actually kind of a weird concept. Uh, I mean, obviously true means true and false means false. Um, if I were to type if true, whatever I type here is going to execute. So, hi. But also, if I type the number one, it works. It's because internally, the value of true is also equal to the number one. Um, let's show you what false looks like. False. You get undefined because uh, it did not execute anything inside this block. And let's say zero. Same thing. Um, not a number is also falsy. Um, there are a lot of internals, like, I think uh, infinity is truthy, but negative infinity is falsy. Uh, negative zero, oops. Negative zero, also falsy. Negative one, still true, because it's a value. It's not equal to zero. Uh, negative numbers count as a value, so they are truthy. Um, this is good to know because uh, let's say if um, what's a good example here Robbie equals window console log what um, so we're gonna compare those two things well it's gonna exit I'm not you're getting an undefined here is what's happening. So you're comparing the string of Robbie to an object of window, and it's going to give you uh, false. Or it might give you undefined if you just type <coughs> some garbage in there. Well, not in this case. If you try to access, uh, say, window dot. Yeah. So it's giving me that because JF, JF, JF does not exist. Um, We'll get into why that error was thrown pretty soon. But so, just remember, falsy means this doesn't execute, truthy means this does execute. Um, all right, so covered. The loops. I'm not going to cover four each because it's not. I'm not going to need it when we get to the next section. Um, all right, let's show you some cool things about arrays. <clears throat> so, do I still have pockets? Yeah, I do. All right. So let's say uh, I want the last item. Uh, so if you call this, which is called a method in this case, it, which is, uh, should I describe functions first, probably? Mm -hmm. Interesting. I should have run through this first. Um, so let's talk about functions. <laughs> um, our, my first function equals function yay my first function yay. Okay, so a function is a piece of code that you can execute uh, 
anywhere in your script, depending on the way you've set it up. Uh, it's just a, a repeatable piece of code that it can accept uh, values or arguments um, and then do stuff with it. Uh, so again, you see I'm using this curly brace. That means that anything inside here is going to execute any time my function called my first function is called. Um, and what I'm saying by return is after the execution of everything in this block that can be executed is done, it's going to return this value. And you can return objects, arrays, strings, numbers. You can return other functions. Um, and so there are different ways to define function too. So function, uh, my second function. <laughs> awesome. Um, yep. How is it that you got the independent uh, console? Oh, uh, there's a little button on the bottom that looks like uh, take a part. half a window. Are you in Chrome or there Safari? You go, you got it. Okay. Yeah. I thought there might be a tear out button. Yeah, I, pop, I popped mine out. There's that little button down in the, uh, the corner where you can pop them out. Uh, so yeah, these are the two ways you define functions. And um, we're going to get into things like scope and the way you order your scripts later. But for your case right now, um, just as you're learning, maybe go with named functions. Because um, you're going to be able to execute those anywhere in your script. Uh, Okay, so now that we know what a function is, uh, I think I can possibly show you what some of these methods are. Um, so the word function and method can be used interchangeably. Uh, interchangeably, uh, People do that. Um, there is a distinction, but for our purposes, uh, just understand that the way you invoke a function is by typing its name with the parentheses after it. That means it's a function. Um, in the case of pockets.pop, you'll see those same parentheses there. That means that guy is a function. But um, whenever it has the dot syntax in front of it, we refer to it as a method. That can get you know, kind of tricky. All you have to remember is, if you see those parentheses, this is a thing that will execute code. Um, so what I'm doing here whenever I type pop is I'm popping the last element off the end of pockets. I'm uh, pulling it off and returning it. So just like up here, we return something. Pop is essentially saying, give me that last index and return it and remove it. Um, so we just got keys. Let's pop it again. We get phone one more time. Well, it's undefined because we just emptied our array. Um, so let's redefine pockets again. Var pockets equals tissue uh, lint more phones. I don't know. You might have more than one. Um, so let's show you another one. So that returned the first one. So pop and shift are going to return um, you know, either the first or last thing and remove it from your array. Now, there's a ton of stuff you can do with arrays. Right there is a list of them. Uh, so if in your console, and this is a good thing about the Chrome Dev Console, is if you type a variable or an object or an array or anything and then type a dot, you're going to get a list of everything you can do. Uh, I'm not going to go through all these. This is something you should explore. Um, some of the really important ones are, let's do this. Let's show you pockets. So now it's lint and more phones. Let's push, um, you know, what else do you have in your pockets? Paper. So whenever you call push, what this does is adds whatever value you gave it to the end of that array. And you'll notice up here it returned the value three that's the length of this array after pushing the element onto it. So that can be valuable in your code, and um, it's something you're going to have to explore. Uh, 
working with rays is something that would take us a lot longer than this class can cover. So again, let's uh, look at this list. Oops. So you can see, you can do the length, join. Um, now let's do a join. Join, do, do, do. So what join did was take every single thing in the array, so these three items, and I gave it a comma inside the function, and it's going to return those three items as a string, you can see with the quotes, um, and sort of comma separated them for me. I could have actually said uh, this, or probably is cool. And it's going to give me back a string of whatever I want with uh, those com combined with that delimiter. Um, that's really useful for um, if you're doing a lot of, of um, string manipulation, it's really uh, beneficial sometimes to do a lot of that within an array and then join them rather than concatenating a ton of strings. Um, that's just a performance thing. Uh, at this point, it kind of doesn't matter if you do that. Uh, and you'll notice that push doesn't destroy the array like pop and shift to do. Um, I think that's actually all we really need to cover at this point. Again, like all of this stuff, some of it, you know, just makes sense by reading it, like array reverse. That's going to reverse the, the order of your array. Um, yeah, and some of these, you're just going to need to uh, play around with them. So. Okay, that's arrays. Um, loops, functions, uh, built-in functions. So there aren't a lot of these actually. Um, everything we've seen is you know a string length. That's a method. JavaScript doesn't actually have a whole lot of built-in functions. A really fun <laughs> one is alert. Hi guys. Um, one of the more annoying functions, but it does serve its purpose. Uh, there's uh, confirm, whatever. That's an OK and a cancel. And so at this point, if I click OK, this returns true. If I click false, or if I click cancel, it returns false. So you can see false got returned. An alert doesn't return anything because it doesn't tell you anything. Uh, prompt is another one. So question Oops. question answer and that returned answer what I returned in there so these aren't the most elegant ways to get data from your, your users on your website but they can come in handy a prompt or a confirm is fine um, we've kind of moved away from that and we have uh, forms within the page that handle a lot of this stuff now but uh, feel free to play around with those. And again, like there, there really aren't a whole lot of built-in functions. Most of them are methods off of one of your data types. So again, like you're going to have to look up uh, these data types. And you can type in, um, oh wait, string Robbie dot n. So on a string, this is going to tell me all of the things I can do to a string. Um, I can find substring on it, I can trim it, so that means if it has space on each side of it, it'll trim that space off. Um, you can change font size, font color, uh, you could find the index of, oh, and it says one because again, everything is zero indexed in JavaScript. So let's, uh, let's actually talk about this because this is interesting. So a string, Robbie, uh, we call it a string, but it behaves like an array sometimes. Each one of these characters is at a certain position, which can be found, you can find the in and use the same syntax. Uh, this is character zero, this is character one. That's why O returned one. Um, so that's something to keep in mind with strings. Uh, with numbers, oh, that's not going to return that way. Um, Number, yeah. So here we get, uh, there's slightly less things you can do to a number, but um, it is still worth checking out.
number is not a number. Or wait, number is not a number. Yes, false. <laughs> so that makes sense. Uh, if you do is not a number. Well, it doesn't give you anything because not a number doesn't have <coughs> is not a number method attached to it. Um, OK, so any questions so far on arrays or methods, functions, data types? for loops, if statements, anything like that? OK, cool. Um, let's move on to a few other things. Um, libraries. Let's talk about what a library is. Um, so whenever you're, you're writing code in a project, you're going to have you know, your index HTML with all your, you know, all your HTML, your classes, that kind of thing. Um, and you're, you need to load in your JavaScript to this page. Now, there's different ways you can do it. You can type script. Actually, you guys probably can't read that, huh? So you can type script, script. And then you just sort of type your JavaScript in here. And again, remember, always put a semicolon at the end of your, your JavaScript statements. Uh, there's a lot of arguing on the internet that you don't have to, and you don't, but I say you do. Uh, it just <laughs> there, there are really good reasons why that are um, total edge cases that you're not going to run into very often, but it's better to not run into them because uh, JavaScript, for the most part, fails silently, meaning if it runs into some weird issue with not having a semicolon, you're not going to get an error but your script isn't going to work. And that's really, really frustrating. Um, so just put a semicolon. Avoid it. It What's that? Avoid that problem happening if you just do it. Right. Just do it. Yeah. Uh, Twitter thought they could get away with not using semicolons. Right. And it brought Twitter down. Yeah, it took Twitter down because someone left out a semicolon. Uh, there's no reason not to use them. Uh, people have it in their head because this is true. JavaScript inserts semicolons when you leave them out. So I can type that if whatever and uh, function thing whatever and I can just go on and on typing stuff without um, without semicolons and that's cool it's really hip on the internet but it doesn't make sense to do it when you're trying to make something work uh, the only time you don't have to put a semicolon is actually after brackets. Um, like these, these don't need it, but uh, you know, if you had array dot push, you definitely want a semicolon after that. Um, and there's again, the the cases where it would break are really small, but just don't, you know, don't give yourself the trouble. Just put them in. Always put semicolons. You should. Recite that to yourself constantly as you're typing. So, um, so yeah, you can put a script here uh, directly into your HTML page. Uh, that's cool if you're just executing a tiny, tiny little bit of code. But when you start executing lots of code, that gets messy. So then the syntax for the script tag is script, src for source, and then the path to wherever that is. So you can see we're loading in modernizer.min.js and then again you still have to close your script tag um, and you'll see down here at the bottom loading in a ton of scripts for this page the one in particular we'll pay attention to is I'm loading in main.js which is right here and that is all the functionality that you saw over here so all of the uh, Whoa, spinny, yellow, moving quote stuff is in uh, oops, is in this file right here. So load your external documents this way. Script source equals whatever. Um, so the, a library is essentially um, a usually a fairly large piece of code that provides you new functionality in your app. Uh, the coolest one for pretty much everyone, especially when they start out, and the one I'm going to talk about uh, briefly during this is jQuery. I don't know if you can see that over there. Um, have you guys heard of jQuery before? Is that a... 
term? Anyone else? Okay, so, so, you know, I was saying earlier, like jQuery doesn't, or uh, JavaScript on its own, uh, you know, you have some methods on your strings, and you have some methods on your arrays, and your objects, and you have all that, and you have like, you know, a handful of, of predefined uh, functions, but it doesn't give you a whole lot, and that's both a good thing, because it's not, it's basically not telling you what to do, it's telling you, you can make anything you want. Uh, we're not making decisions for you. It's a bad thing because it doesn't give you much. Um, so you're going to use something like jQuery, which is a library that provides uh, literally hundreds and hundreds of helper functions. Uh, it also helps you select things in your web page. So just like in your CSS, how you did select uh, container, dot container for class, um, you know, selecting your elements just by typing it out. Well, in JavaScript, the cool thing is you want to play with your your HTML elements, and you do that using jQuery. Now, let me let me actually open a new window and show you the basic syntax of jQuery. Dollar sign. I'm wondering if we should take a break before we get into jQuery. I would love to take a break. Word about break time. What's that? Oh, I do need a power cord. Great. Uh, yeah, let's all uh, take a minute and get up. And it's really hot here. Woohoo! Hey, what you got? What I got going over here? We'll be back in just a minute. <laughs> mm -hmm. I want to know why that stupid object did not work. Good. Dinking around with the old Illustrator. Oh, I'm so stupid. Yes. Now I know why yeah. it didn't work. <laughs> it's because I wasn't assigning it. That's a that's a weird little thing. I don't tend to do this a lot in the console. So there you go. Here's an object. <laughs> so we'll cover objects a little bit more when we come back. Uh, it has a lot of. Um, it's a very powerful thing because everything's an object. So. What do you say, 10, 15 minutes, something like that? Just wish I had more time to prepare for these things. It was like literally I'm like working earlier and like, uh, okay, let's go. I'm preparing yeah. mine right now anyway. What's that? I'm preparing my stuff right now. Nice. <laughs> oh, that's so annoying. So you can do that, and you can do that, but you can't do... that. I wonder what that is. Okay. So... What are the square brackets? It's a block. So, okay, so that's the other confusing thing is uh, the brackets indicate both a block and an object. So there it thinks it's just an object. Um, oh yeah, I can't get the thing. Oh, so it's parsing this as if it's a block. So when it sees a, so you can't type, um, so you can type one, but you can't type that. So what it's saying is, you know, that doesn't look right, even though if you assign it, it's coerced into an object. Mm. So frustrating. Such a stupid mistake. <laughs> hey, this is Dan. I just wanted to follow up Robbie's great introduction to JavaScript with something I wrote here while I was sitting in the class. Up here we have some HTML, it's pretty straightforward. We have a div that contains some text, IMA, and then a span that doesn't contain anything but has a class of fruit. In our JavaScript, we're going to define our fruits as an array. Actually, since we're using these brackets, it's an object. So banana gets property yellow, apple gets property red, orange gets property orange. Then we're gonna loop through the fruits. So for every fruit in fruits, we're going to 
find the element that matches that selector. So this first one would find banana, anything with banana as class. We use the dot in, to signify we're looking for a class. And then we set the CSS of that element to color, and we get the value of fruit by passing it back into the array. What that means is we're taking fruit, which is banana, entering it back into this object and saying what does that equal. So we're setting the color to yellow based on the banana fruit. Then down here, we find that same element here, banana, and then we also find the fruit class within it. So that's referring to this span right here. And then we replace the text of that with the actual fruit, in this case, banana. That's all fine and dandy, and that would give us you know, some pretty decent results. Let me comment out this last part before I explain it. So if we were to run this, we get, I'm a banana, I'm a apple, I'm a orange, which is not very good English. So we need to add an N there. And to do that, I've written a little function here. And I'll walk you through it. Basically, let's uh, break this down. One way to break down JavaScript is to go to the innermost, innermost set of parentheses. That's kind of where you start. So we're going to get a substring of the fruit. What that means is we're taking a position. This is the beginning and the end position of the substring, we're saying from 0 to 1. And remember, everything in JavaScript starts at 0. So we're saying from 0 to 1, uh, the substring of the fruit, which will be the first letter, B or A or O. Then we're asking, is that letter, which is equal to this, in the array that we provide? We provide an array. This is an array of the vowels. And we say in array. Now you'll notice I have greater than or equal to zero, and that's because this function here, in array, does not return a true or false, but rather the position of the element in the array. So if it's not in the array, it returns negative one. So if it's greater than or equal to zero, that means that our first letter is a vowel, and we need to do some special stuff. So we take the original text, which is the text of the fruit. This will be, I'm a apple. Uh, we'll move on to using apple since I'm a banana is working just fine. So we take the first part, which is another substring, and we say from 0 to 5. So we go from here, 1, 2, I'm sorry, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So everything up until the A. So we take that and mark that as our first part. We take the last part. And we start at 5, same place we started, right here. But then we're telling it to go to the end. And the way we tell it to go to the end is we get the length of the text, and we do minus 1. And the reason we do a minus 1 is because the length is an actual value of how many characters, and it doesn't correspond exactly to an, uh, the array counting, which starts at 0. So we're saying if the length is 1, you would start at 0. Anyway, the length of this is like, I don't know, 12 or something. So it says from 5 to 11. Basically, it gets everything after the A up until the end. So then we take our fruit, and we replace the text with the first part, plus an N, plus a space, very important, plus the last part. And that gives us very, very good English. So there you go. There's a little bit of JavaScript that was written right here in the class while you guys wait just to try and explain some basic functions. When you see this dollar sign, that means we're using jQuery. You'll see I have that loaded over here in the Choose Framework of my JS Fiddle. Anyway, any questions, feel free to post them in the comments. Uh, thanks for listening to the fourth class of Metal Toad University. And special thanks to Robbie.